Launch check and countdown net pad is clear. Ten, nine, eight. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. Good morning, everyone. 
On your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 7.29 a.m. Pacific time launch from Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base off the coast of California. My name is Jesse Anderson. I'm a production engineering manager here at SpaceX, joining you from our headquarters in Hawthorne, California, which is just about 150 miles south of the launch site that you see there on your screen. The Space Development Agency Tranche Zero mission, as you can probably tell by the name, is for the Space Development Agency, or SDA. Today's launch marks SpaceX's 221st launch overall and 22nd launch of 2023. And if you've been following along, you may know that the Falcon 9 auto-aborted just prior to T0 on our first launch attempt. Falcon 9 is designed to auto-abort if it sees anything that is even slightly off. The abort was triggered by one of the nine engines on the first stage. The teams took a closer look and since then have confirmed that the vehicle is healthy and we are ready to launch SDA's 10 satellites into low Earth orbit. Now, today's mission supports the SDA's Proliferated Warfighter Space Architecture Constellation, also known as PWSA. As an organization, the Space Development Agency leverages commercial advances to speed delivery of key capabilities on just two-year timelines with the goal of quickly delivering space-based capabilities. The 10 satellites on board the second stage will provide global military communication and missile warning indication and tracking capabilities to support terrestrial missions. It's also worth mentioning at the request of our customer, we will not be sharing Engine any chill has started. We will not be sharing any views from the second stage today and therefore will be ending our webcast around the T plus eight minute mark just after Falcon 9 is expected to touch back down on Earth for landing. Now, the SDA payload is located at the very top of Falcon 9, which you can see there on your screen inside of what we call the payload fairing. The payload fairing is composed of two halves, and when put together, it measures about 40 feet in length and 17 feet in diameter. Now, while on Earth, the fairing's primary job is to protect the payload from contamination. Then after liftoff and through ascent, the fairing will also shield against aerothermal loads and heating. But once we're in the vacuum of space, we no longer need this protection, Stage so we will... Stage 1, RP-1 load is complete. We will jettison the fairing halves, and the second stage will continue on its journey to orbit. Now, the fairing halves supporting today's mission are flight-proven, with one half flying for its sixth time and the other for its fourth time. Now below the payload fairing is the second stage, which is responsible for propelling the payload to its drop-off orbit in space. Now, if you look at the rocket on your screen, you may see that there are some similarities between the first and the second stage. Not only is the second stage similar to the first stage, it also has the same diameter, uses the same metal in the tanks, same computers, same propellant, and nearly the same engine. Now, this allows us to use similar tooling, design, and systems, which results in greater efficiency and reliability. Now, the first and second stages are connected by the inner stage, which houses the pneumatic pushers that allow the stage to separate during flight. The inner stage also houses the second stage engine, which we call the Merlin vacuum engine or MVAC engine. And as a reminder for today's launch, we will not be sharing any views from the second stage at the request of our customer. And again, we'll, we will be ending our webcast around the T plus Talking eight. tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. We will be ending our webcast around the T plus eight minute mark just after Falcon 9 touches back down onto land. Now, the bottom two thirds of the vehicle is the first stage, and that is the primary part of the rocket that gets reused multiple times. On the bottom of the first stage are nine Merlin M1D engines that accelerate the vehicle through the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Now, the first stage, or what we call the booster, that's supporting today's mission, is flying for the second time, having previously supported a past Starlink mission. Now, we'll attempt to recover the first stage again at landing zone four, and if successful, it will mark our 183rd overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy first stage landings. Now it is a little hard to see with the clouds on your screen, but the clamp arms just below the fairing are beginning to open. And now you can see on the right hand of your screen that the transporter erector or the TE is beginning to attract away from the vehicle just slightly. Now at T0, 
hydraulics will pull the transport erector even farther away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. And there you can see the transport erector reclined just slightly away from the vehicle. Now at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stage are nearly fully loaded with propellant. Stage one, locks load is complete. There's that call out. The first stage vehicle is now fully loaded with liquid stage oxygen. Stage one, Pogo. Stage two will wrap up just about a minute after stage one at the T minus two minute mark. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. And what that means is the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And just inside T minus two seconds, we will light the Merlin 1D engines and then we are set for liftoff. Now the SDA tranche zero payload continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the vehicle. We're just about 20 seconds or so away from liquid oxygen loading completion on the second stage. Once that concludes, Falcon 9 will be fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. We are expecting that the second stage is fully loaded with liquid oxygen, just waiting for a call out. Stage two, locks load is complete. In great news, Falcon 9 is fully loaded with propellant now. And you can see on the right hand of your screen, or now you can see a view that there are more white clouds coming from the transport erector. That's because now that we're done with loading propellant, we are clearing out the liquid oxygen line on the TE. Now coming up at T minus one minute, the flight computers will take over the launch countdown. We should hear a call out for Falcon 9 in startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. And great news, now just waiting for the final call from the launch director. LD is go for launch. Excellent call out. All systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 and Space Development Agency Tranche Zero. T minus 30 seconds. We're now at T plus 40 seconds into the Space Development Agency Tranche Zero mission. Falcon 9 Power has- and telemetry nominal. Falcon 9 has throttled down its engines in preparation for Max Q, which is coming up here in just about 20 seconds or so. Max Q is the point at which the vehicle experiences the Falcon greatest- Falcon supersonic. The greatest amount of aerodynamic pressure, the largest structural load on the vehicle on ascent. Max Q. Great news, we have passed through Max Q. And we're also getting some awesome views of the first stage or the, the Falcon 9 vehicle on your screen. 
Now we do have five events coming up very quickly. That will be Miko. And back engine chill has started. That will be Miko stage separation, stage one flip, SES one, and then the boost back burn on the first stage will begin. As a reminder, we won't be showing any views of our second stage at the request of our customer today. And again, we will have Miko, our main engine cutoff. That's where we shut down all of those engines that you see lit up on your screen right now. We'll shut those down in preparation for stage separation. The first stage will- Vehicle is on a nominal trajectory. The first stage will perform a flip maneuver and a boost back burn in order to start making its way back to its landing zone at land today. And the second stage will continue with igniting the MBAC engine. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. Over. MVAC ignition. Stage one boost back startup. And we have just had all of those events. Miko, stage separation. You can see on your screen that the stage one vehicle is performing a flip maneuver. And the MVAC engine has ignited on the second stage. Again, we will not be showing any views of the second stage at the request of our customer today. But we should hear a call out for fairing separation here shortly. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's that call out. We have had confirmation of fairing separation. Right now you're seeing a very awesome view of the first stage vehicle currently in its boost back burn. Again, we are attempting to land back at land today on landing zone four. Stage one boost back shutdown. And there's that call out that the boost back burn has concluded. Now the vehicle is attempting to land back at land, so it requires three burns in order to get there. We've just concluded the boost back burn of the first stage. Both vehicles remain on nominal trajectories. Next up will be the entry burn around the T plus six minute mark, and then the final burn, which is the landing burn, uh, just about a minute after the entry burn. And you can see on your screen that the grid fins have deployed. Those help to guide the vehicle as it makes its way back to its landing zone. Now, if you've been following along, you might know that we typically attempt landing on our first stage on a drone ship in the middle of the ocean. Today, however, we do have the ability to land back on land, which is not too far from where we lifted off this morning. Our ability to execute a land landing is really dependent upon the needs of the mission, the trajectory, and the performance needed by the satellite determines if we can return to land. Now, most of the time, these requirements don't allow for a return to launch site landing attempt, which is why we developed the capability to land our first stages out in the ocean with our drone ships. But again, today, we do have this capability, so we are making our way back to land. Now, if you're just now joining us, we had a successful liftoff of Falcon 9 and the Space Development Agency Tranche Zero mission. As the mission name suggests, today's customer is SDA, or Space Development Agency. After an on-time liftoff, we had successful main engine cutoff, or what we call MECO, stage separation, stage one flip, second stage engine start one, the boost back burn, and fairing separation from the second stage. We are now coming up on the second burn on our first stage vehicle, which is the entry burn just about 30 seconds away from that entry burn beginning. The entry burn is where we light up three of the nine engines on the first stage vehicle, and that helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. What you're seeing on your screen is a awesome view. Looking from the first stage vehicle, you may see some of those white puffs there on your screen. That is nitrogen gas and that is from our attitude control systems that helps to Stage orient one, burn startup. that helps to orient the vehicle
And there you can visually see on your screen that the entry burn has begun. We've reignited three of nine M1D engines. This burn is just about 20 seconds. Stage one entry burn shut down. And stage, with, stage one FDS is saved. With that call out, and you can visually see on your screen that the engines have shut down, that concludes the entry burn on the first stage. Coming up next, in just under 20 seconds, will be the landing burn. This is a single engine burn. This is enough thrust, 190,000 pounds of thrust, to enable the vehicle to touch down for landing. Stage one transonic. Stage one landing burn. And the landing burn has begun. Let's watch as Falcon 9 touches down on landing zone four. Stage one landing leg deploy. Terminal guidance. Stage one landing confirmed. And a great view. Falcon 9 has touched down on landing zone four. And there you can see it standing tall right there on your screen. This was the second launch and landing for the specific booster and our 183rd overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket. And that includes both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy first stage landings. With confirmation of a successful landing, we'll be ending our webcast for the Space Development Agency Tranche Zero mission today. We want to thank the SDA for entrusting us with today's launch and a special thanks to the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing support. For all of those tuning in, thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.